I have literally seen everyone fighting like Hunger Games over the micro drainage licenses. Like there's only one like USB and there's like three jobs you need to get out and everyone is like fighting for it. Fortunate enough, one of the previous company I used to work for, they had purchased the Causeway suit. So for the civil engineering, so we had the PDS and the flow license. So one of the guys told me, why don't you use flow? I think he was the only one using the flow. I was like, okay, I'll give it a shot. So I started using flow and literally haven't used any other software since. It's like, it's so self-explanatory that I think this tutorial is unnecessary. But today we're going to be looking at the user interface, where you can put what and pretty much what's what. And I am Ferdi and welcome to Civil Textures. Just a quick disclaimer. Uh, not step on anyone's toes every software is good on its own merits and i'm not sponsored by any uh, company to do advertisement or anything just to make sure and to make sure my video doesn't get banned let's begin so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna open just a flow file that i prepared for this video and walk you through it so to start with we have the sketch tab if you have flow plus the sketch tab will be at the top but if you don't have it it will be at the bottom so basically the sketch type is exactly what it is is basically you can sketch your actual drainage you don't have to input it in a data entry kind of style so i'll be bringing a video on this one as well uh, soon enough so hit the sub button so let's go simulation settings as it says this is where you put your settings for your simulation at this uh, excel style kind of table you put your return periods you want to calculate your climate change any additional areas in that will fall into or uh, flows then you've got the storm durations so you tick the storm duration that you want then we've got the options here so rain methodology m560 our ratio svs then we've got analysis speed then you've got drain downtime you've got a button to calculate the discharge rate so basically you can input your values the sar the spr watch my previous video the greenfield runoff and how to calculate this and you can find out how to get these values and then if you click calculate it will calculate the discharge rates for you and if you tick this box then when you run the analysis it will calc it will check if it matches those discharges so basically you have to fill what discharge rates you want to calculate at the moment flow does not do a 200 but i think it's only scotland that required a 200 or scottish waters not pretty sure but it can do 500 and then we've got to check the discharge volume same as well so you can get how much volume leaves your site and then you've got your storage estimate storage estimate is pretty sweet you just type 130 your area and where you are and then just hit calculate and you calculate for you obviously you need to put this information as well to work because that's how storage estimate works then you've got the my network basically it will say on your storm network so basically what this is is basically the name of the network you're working for so if you got the bottom networks you can see it says here my network and you can change it let's say your network and then just click anywhere on the left tab and it will change to your network uh flow needs to update that so as soon as you hit your network it should change automatically to be honest but it's just one click so it's not a biggie then you've got your design settings design settings is basically you're telling flow how you want to design things so i want them to design for the, uh, using the fsr methodology i want the return period to be two i do not want any additional flows sv time of entries a rainfall uh, i use 35 if somebody told you, you use 75 eh, they might be thinking something else because the documents from the government say 35 and some councils might require 50 for conservative purposes so i use 35 cleansing velocity for water you can get from the source adoption you want to connect the pipes levels to soffit and then you prefer cover depth for the pipes with nodes it's a pretty much kind of excel style table so basically you've got your names your areas time of entry additional flows cover level diameter width easting northing 
and then you've got the depth and any no uh, which is calculated by flow and any nodes that flow might have now the green symbolizes that it's okay there is nothing wrong with it and if it's yellow means it's like uh, alert but if it's red means it's a no no and no analysis would run until you resolve the red so it's pretty much straightforward you have a plus icon here where you can define the manhole type if it's a manhole a sealed manhole or junction the, if it's adoptable the manhole type basically is sorry the node type is what node it is and then manhole type if it's adoptable or not and you can define more in the libraries which we'll look in a bit and then you've got your sum then we've got links which stands for pipes and literally it's so straightforward it's the same as the nodes it's like a table the only difference is if you want to do your pipes you just literally type from where to where that's it you type from s1 to s2 you don't have to go through oh pipe one goes there and the, oh the pipe before it is five so this one will be 5.001 no you can literally name whatever you want that's the freedom complete freedom. Freedom! freedom and then you've got the plus icon as well and you've got the link type which you define what it is yes you can actually define the swell exactly how you want then you've got the velocity i haven't done my homework on these I'll get back to you on these ones after I do my homework and then you can define area going into that pipe so basically you're telling it's a gully and then you've got halfway through like the insertion point and time of entry you can do anything in blue is flow input so basically flow filled it in for you but you can edit it but anything in the gray out columns it's what flow calculated just bear that in mind then you've got the hydrographs pretty straightforward you've got node section so basically you fill which node you want to do the hydrograph table for and then you've got different types of hydrograph you've got your flow controls so basically i want my flow control let's say on manhole s4 then i just type s4 i select the list of control types which i want and then i just fill in the gaps storage same thing and then others and i need to read into that but i haven't used it yet but probably if i do something more complex i will have to use it then we've got our results the results is where you can view your results uh, let's hit the analysis button which is the furthest on the right and it will analyze for you now flow uses multiple cpu cores to do the calculation and doesn't use only one that's i think what it does basically my understanding is it does not calculate oh one storm okay it's done now calculate the other one no it calculates in parallel simu sim simultaneously we said that we managed to said that as soon as it calculates it it takes you to the results tab and then you've got your years which you want to view and then you've got which storms you want and then you've got um, a, what you want to view upstream outflow depends then you've got your approval settings this is a beautiful feature of, uh, of flow so basically you tell flow what you want it to check for you want to check for node sizes node losses or the maximum length etc you can even check for maximum length of one like if you, or your pipes are more than one meter it will throw off an arrow be like you have a pipe which is more than one meter and just basically fill the blanks and hit run test and your tests uh, your results will be in the approval results libraries is exactly what it says it's a list of libraries that you create so you've got manhole types we've got adoptable and here you specify the max width and then it tell you tell what diameter you want and then otherwise use the maximum link width so basically if the pipe is 500 then add 900 mil on top so be 1400 and this is i think the same max depth and diameter and if you want to add another one you just type here and then you fill the blanks and then same with link types so you've got let's say swell open user defined i define this swell or if you want to storage you close rectangular my tank is six meters by one meter uh, deep and if i i'm not going to show you this time i'm going to show you in the next video how to define actually model your actual tank and not the typical no my manhole storage where the manhole becomes a storage then you've got your networks which i've shown before and then you've got some preferences now 
at the top you've got new open save the standards and then you've got design report so basically that's where you decide what you want to produce as a report you've got checkboxes you can tick off and tick on then you've got your headings you can edit your headings and add your information and then you've got a, a data so basically let's say i want a manhole schedule so untick all the boxes and then just go save and let's go to our whole schedule okay yes i want to open the report right now and kabang you've got a manhole schedule and we can copy paste that in pdf in autocad actually pds will produce the same thing but we can paste it in autocad we can modify it however we want which is sweet and headings and then you've got like zoom in zoom out etc uh, colors what color uh, like black and white or color now then we've got the plot where you can actually design your uh, print your long sections in the plan just take the plan option and then hit refresh to show you can show grid hit refresh and show grids and where they are it's pretty sweet you can change paper space portrait etc just fiddle around with it play with it have fun and then my favorite visual of all 3d so basically double click it zoom extends same as autocad and then you can see actually the actual stuff if you cannot see your storage just go view and tick the display storage vertical exaggerations coordinate exaggerations and zoom extends there you go and the beautiful feature is when you click on it when you click on it i said yeah <laughs> You can view actually the manual properties as well. Now, for the other half of this window, we have some buttons here at the right, left. And then you've got, so display long section, we can view our long section. And the numbers here, the plus and minus, we can see how many uh, pipes we want to see in our section. If we want to see one, we have to make it zero. And the one signifies like one after that. Then we can show the display graph so basically after we run our analysis we can see where the water level is in comparison with the cover level and then we can see display plan so basically we can when we are doing our pipes connecting pipes together after we define our manholes we can look which manholes are we using to connect instead of switching to nodes links nodes links nodes links you can just zoom in and zoom out here so this is flow in a nutshell and I think you should if you have the accessibility to use flow go ahead and use it and if you have any questions i'm here just leave it in the comment section below and i'll answer them for you and because we has a pretty good customer support uh, i've used them once and they were like straight away like responding back so don't forget to like subscribe and share with your colleagues so we can grow this youtube channel and uh if you want to uh, be aware of when I upload every time a new video, just hit the bell button. I think it's the bell. bell. And I'll see you next time. Take care.